Chapter 4 Five Practical Ways to Train Your Discipline You can also introduce more discipline in your life if you make an effort to train yourself to control your urges and emotions. There are several main techniques to increase your self-control and become better at resisting instant gratification. In this chapter, we'll cover some of the most effective ways to do so. Meditation Meditation trains your mind to focus on one thing, your breath. It takes a lot of willpower to fight distractions and sit still, even just for a couple of minutes. Studies show that meditation induces white matter changes in the anterior cingulate, which leads to improved self-control. If you've always struggled with meditating because your mind constantly jumped from one thought to another, don't despair. It's a normal thing that happens to everyone. Even if you meditate for just five minutes a day and your mind constantly wanders, the mere practice of bringing your thoughts back to your breath will train your mind. Soon you'll be able to keep your focus for longer than just 20 seconds or so. If you want to introduce meditation in your life, start small. In the beginning, I don't recommend sessions that are longer than five minutes. It sounds like nothing. But when you sit with your eyes closed and try to focus on your breath, it feels like an eternity. How do you exactly meditate? While you can read a book or two about different types of meditation, it's not necessary for self-discipline purposes. The key in meditation is to focus on the present moment and sensations traveling through your body while you sit still. Here's a simple step-by-step -step explanation of how to do it. Number one. Sit still in a comfortable position. Don't stand up. Don't lie down. Sit in an upright posture. Forget about the cross-legged lotus position you know from movies, unless you're super flexible. The three most common positions for beginners are sitting at the edge of the chair with your back straight. Yes, it can be as simple as that. No need for exotic positions. Sitting cross-legged. It's easy and common among beginners but I find it too straining for my back. Hence, I prefer the third option. Seiza position. Fold your legs underneath your thighs and rest your buttocks on your heels. For more comfort, you can put a pillow under your rear. You can use a simple app to limit your session to five minutes or set an alarm on your phone. Just don't use an obnoxious loud alarm that will give you a heart attack. Number two. Close your eyes and focus on your breath. Simple counting. One, inhale. Two, exhale. One, inhale. Two, exhale. Works best. You can also count each breath until you reach 100. At first, don't expect to reach more than 20 before you lose your concentration. Once you get better, you can stop counting your breaths and focus on the general feeling in your body. Number three, focus on the sensation in your body as you inhale and exhale. Start from your feet and go upward, trying to relax every little muscle. You'll be surprised how much tension you store in certain parts of your body, including tension in places you weren't aware of before, such as your chin. If you lose focus, bring it back to your breath and the sensations in your body. You're not doing anything wrong if you lose your focus. It's a part of the process. Repeat the practice every single day. Morning works best for most people, but it doesn't matter when you do it as long as you keep it as part of your routine. Don't make your sessions longer until you become comfortable sitting for five minutes. It's better to add an additional minute every other week or so rather than get discouraged when you transition to 15 minutes and find yourself unable to focus. Cold showers. What? I'm not a sadist, I swear. Taking cold showers is an optional idea for people who are willing to try things outside the box. Why would cold showers improve your self-discipline? Take one and you'll discover why. That's not enough to persuade you? Okay, here's a longer explanation. Taking cold showers forces you to endure a painful feeling for long-term benefits, which are well documented. It takes a lot of willpower not to jump out of the shower or turn the knob back to the hot water. 
I took five minute ice cold showers for two months and they helped me explore how my self control works. The first time I took a cold shower, my entire body was numb afterward. A couple showers later, I discovered that it was the first one or two minutes that felt the worst. Once I endured the first 60 to 120 seconds, I could handle the remaining time with little pain, and sometimes even with enjoyment. Once I discovered that it's the first two minutes that are the hardest, I noticed a similar reaction while trying to resist a temptation. It's a reassuring thought that things get easier once you endure the first 120 seconds. I don't necessarily believe you have to keep taking cold showers for the rest of your life. After all, we don't build self-discipline to make our lives miserable. However, it's a good idea to take cold showers for a week or two as a short-term experiment. It will teach you a lot about your limits. You'll understand when you cross the line from I'm going to freeze to I can stand it to it's not that bad. Soon you'll be able to apply your findings in other areas of life, most notably during strenuous physical exercise. Fasting Every ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar, millions of adult Muslims fast from the break of dawn until sunset. One of the reasons of this form of worship is the desire to practice self-control and train oneself to become a better person. Abstaining from food works in a similar way as taking cold showers, although it helps you build long-term self-discipline. A cold shower takes five minutes, while fasting takes at least 14 to 16 hours to benefit from it. The temptation to break the fast and eat is always there, up to the moment you get used to the new way of eating. It's not something that fits everyone, but it won't hurt to try it as an experiment and see how it affects your willpower. Studies show that intermittent fasting has beneficial effects on the cardiovascular and cerebrovascular systems and is a potential eating pattern for successful brain aging. It is also a powerful practice to develop your self-discipline. As with cold showers, you don't necessarily have to make fasting an inherent part of your life, even fasting just once a week. For instance, you can stop eating at 6 p.m. one day and resume at 6 p.m. the next day will help you practice your self-discipline. An additional benefit of fasting is that you will develop a healthier relationship with food and possibly lose some weight. You don't need to eat five meals a day to lose fat or stave off hunger. Neither does fasting reduce your cognitive performance, sleep, or mood. I fast for 16 to 20 hours every single day, and if anything, it has only improved my life. I no longer feel extreme hunger, I always find it funny when my friends die from hunger a couple of hours after eating a meal. And eating no longer controls my schedule. Sometimes I don't eat until late evening. I recommend fasting at least occasionally. You can skip a meal or two, stop eating for a full day, or temporarily change your eating pattern. You can always go back to your usual patterns if you find it's not for you. Control small things and monitor yourself. Just like meditation can help you become more disciplined by focusing on the act of breathing, so can little challenges in your everyday life help you become better at self-control. For instance, many people have a tendency to slouch. It might be you right now. Make it a challenge to keep your back straight throughout the day. Do you have a habit of swearing when you're stuck in a traffic jam? Resist the temptation and switch your mind to something more positive. Additional self-control will help you manage your anger better. Do you leave your bed unmade when you wake up? Resist the temptation to leave it unmade and spend two minutes making it as perfect as if you expected someone to come over. Do you always want to prove other people wrong? Exert your self-control to put an end to this behavior and keep your tongue behind your teeth. You can also use various online tools and apps to track the small things in your life your spending habits, time spent browsing through entertainment sites, time spent watching TV. Self-monitoring will help you pick new challenges that will help you improve your self-control. Start with one little thing and get better at controlling it. Increase the difficulty by picking a thing that is a bit harder to control. Keep challenging yourself to gain more control over the little things in your life you usually do mindlessly.
go beyond the first feeling of fatigue. Sir Roger Bannister, who was the first man to run the mile in less than four minutes in 1954, said in 2000, It's the brain, not the heart or lungs, that is the critical organ. It's the brain. Studies show that the first feeling of fatigue is an emotion, not the signal that your body is spent and can't go on any longer. Consequently, you can learn how to exert more self-discipline when you decide to go past the first feeling of fatigue and see how much further you can push yourself. Obviously, the easiest area where you can introduce this finding is exercise. If you go to the gym, don't be afraid to go past your original limits and see if you can push a little bit more. Make it a priority to do it in a safe way, though, with the proper form and a spotter to help you. I do it from time to time at the gym, and it helps me explore my true limits and discover that frequently it's only my mind that limits me from achieving more. If you run long distances, push yourself to beat your personal record and finish your usual distance in a shorter period of time or run farther. As with weightlifting, don't hurt yourself in the process. Don't push so far that you injure yourself. Going beyond the first feeling of fatigue will help you move your limits and increase your capabilities to control yourself under overwhelming pressure. After all, if you can push through extreme exhaustion and complete yet one more rep with a heavy bar on your back, you can also resist the temptation to eat a chocolate bar, right? Let's recap five practical ways to train your discipline. Meditation helps you train your self-discipline by forcing you to focus only on your breath. It also teaches you how to resist distractions and live in the present moment. If you want to begin meditating, start small with five minute long sessions. Cold showers, although extremely painful during the first minute or two, can help you deal with challenges better. Consequently, you'll be more in control when faced with an overwhelming temptation to give in. Fasting, even infrequent, will help you better control your urges. It's especially useful for people who want to change their relationship with food and become better at controlling cravings. Learning to control small things can help you control bigger things. Treat it like a workout and start from monitoring simple things, then go on to harder things. Test your boundaries. The first feeling of fatigue is your body's reaction under stress. But it doesn't mean you can't go on any longer. Push your limits to see how much more self-control you can squeeze out of yourself.